when things started happening last year, I had a couple of calls from people saying, but how, how do I know they're working? Yeah. I said, it, it is trust yeah. as much, but you don't know they're working when they're sitting at their desk either, to be honest with you. Oh, no, quite often they're sitting on so, Facebook or doing something anyway. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, yeah, that's not, like, that's the problem you're going to have regardless. So. Yeah, and if, if that's your concern, then again, I think you need to look at either yourself how your culture in the office is and everything like that. So there's a whole lot of mix of things. Whether they're working from home or in the office, those things are always going to happen. Hi, I'm Ashley Goodchild and welcome to the PM Collective podcast where I invite you to listen to opinions and stories that are relevant in the property management world. I hope you enjoy today's episode. She is highly respected within the Perth property management industry, and we all look up to her for advice and common sense. She is the general manager of Rent West, which employs 25 employees. Her name is Michelle Rigg, and she is joining me today to talk about working from home. So thank you for joining me. Hey, Ashley, I've been looking forward to this chat. <laughs> and it's probably going to be a bit of a debate, maybe more than a chat. So we'll see how it um, how it turns out. Um, so I make a very, um, I make a very, I'm very open with the fact that I'm struggling with the working from home with my team. Um, and then you had told me that you have implemented some things. So tell me about what you've done in your office and how it works. Yeah, sure. So look, and we don't have everybody working from home. It's very much depends on the person. So we're a pretty flexible office. But even before the world went to poo last year around this time, we, we had already had a lot of our property managers working from home. And it does work really well. And of course, we manage properties um, all over the metropolitan area with our office being based in Applecross. So it doesn't actually make sense for our property managers working and living down Valdivis, Bel- Mandurway, Byford, you know, up in the northern suburbs to drive an hour or whatever it is in the traffic these days to the office every day. Uh, the time is just like not not common sense there. But what we found is that they actually work more efficiently because in the office they have me coming around saying, what you doing, what you up to, how's it going? You know, those continual interruptions all the time. Uh, and what we found is that our ability to service the clients is has actually enhanced because they're there in the areas close to where their properties are. So if something's going on or there's an issue, they can pop around or show, show a tenant, you know, just do that one-off inspection. It makes it so much easier. Um, they, the, there's criteria around it, so it's not just a given. And as I said, uh, so when, when everybody started working from home last year, it was a very easy move for us because we were pretty much there. But we do have uh, probably, it's probably half-half, probably have half the property managers that still come in during the day or do a mix of working from home. You know, if they've got inspections, they'll go home and they've got another appointment in the afternoon. So it works very efficiently that way as well. But then we've got a couple that they just need to come into the office and that's the best way that they work. So it's pretty flexible. Okay. So if you had a staff member that could, um, that just sort of came in the morning, so I'm just going to do the morning in the office and I'm going to go out, do my inspections and then finish off at home, that type of thing, that's Yep. Yep, absolutely. But we do okay. have some that don't come. So we have a rule and, and the biggest challenge for us was the connectivity of our team and that's a big part of our culture as well, that, that connection. And so that was we've made some changes with the way so everybody has to start Monday in the office. Okay. And I start the day with a kickstart stand-up meeting. Uh, we, you know, read all the good news comments, really just pump them up for the day to start the week. Yeah. And then Thursdays, everybody has to be in as well. That's our training day, our team meeting day. So those are two big days for us where it is, you know, uh, compulsory that everybody starts the day in the office on those days. Yeah. So um, would they be your main rules then? Just that's, those that's, two? That's our that. main. Uh, we also, we um, uh, everybody checks in in the morning on Teams, Microsoft Teams. Yes. Yeah. Um, so if you're not in the office, you must check in whether you're working from home or not, so that we know where you are and and that. And we use that chat all throughout the day. That's how our team connects, you know, on yep. the road if they've got any things happening or anything. So, yep. yeah. and, and is that just like a, um, okay, guys, this is what I'm doing today yep. type thing? Yep, yeah. yep, okay. yep. You'll get a run of um, uh, people saying, look, I've got an early morning appointment, then I've got a final in the afternoon, I'll be working from home in between. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and yeah, and, and it creates flexibility as well because some of the girls are up early, they just go onto their computer, they're doing their work, you know, they'll stop, take the kids to school, come back, go and do an appointment. Um, and the flexibility is one thing that we're really working towards. Yeah. Uh, and and, and I can, you can see when they're working, like, 
you know, and I think you can do that whether they're in the office or not. And just because they're in the office, it doesn't actually mean that they're being productive and efficient yeah. or doing what they're supposed to be doing. So, yeah. so um, what we've actually found is the property managers working from home are actually more efficient okay. than the ones in the office where there's that those interruptions. No problems with any of our team. They're no, all no, good no, property no, yeah, managers, yeah. but it's just the different styles they work. Yeah. Probably the, the interesting talking to to the girls working from home is that when do they switch off? Yes. So I was chatting with um, one of our girls there and she was saying, you know, I just keep working, keep working, you know, and yeah. then I find it's like 5.30, 6 o'clock, you know. Yeah. So it, it, it is, they're probably the things that I'm really working with the team with is yeah. how do they look after themselves, yeah. putting those boundaries in place and also when they're on holidays, a day off, how do they not look at their workspace. Correct. So one of the girls, I think, covered it up. Yes. Just put a cover she over their computer the and, and everything. And um, we have two-factor authentication now on everything because we're now pretty much online. Yeah. Except the online Outlook's nightmare, so we still dial in remote into the office for that. Yeah. So their mobile phones are in the office, so they can't actually log into anything because okay. without their work mobile phone, they, they can't ah, authenticate okay. it. Yeah. So that's how we stop them. Yeah. From when they're on holidays. And that's that's like a long holiday, not just a, a day or two. Correct, yeah. That's a long holiday. Phone's in the office, so there's no temptation that they can log on and see what's going on at work because it's really important for them to have that mental break. Break, yeah. Mm. Uh, new staff members, would it be some the flexibility something that you offer them straight away or is it something that you get after a three-month probation or how would that work with new staff? So it's certainly not straight away, we need to make sure that people understand our processes and how we work and everything like that. Um, it is, depending on the areas that they're working, it is a condition of their employment that they will be working from home. Um, but there is certainly, you know, that period. And we don't generally put a timeline on it because some people learn quicker than others, but it is very much, we're very clear on saying we need to make sure you understand our processes and what our expectations are with our work and our customer service before you get the ability to work from home. It could be a bit of a mix, you know, if they've got inspections and they're more than capable of doing yeah. some emails and that. So it can be that just that changing up. But, no, it's not just a straight up no way. Yeah, your first day at work is um, at home. Yeah, no. <laughs> not <laughs> no, one of those situations. No, no, no. no. <laughs> um, so uh, one of the things on my list was the staff culture. So And and my concern was, yeah, how do you maintain that staff mm. culture? So so you check-ins on a Monday, well, you check-ins each morning and then Mondays and Thursdays and, and then that would, you would consider that's, that has been so far enough to maintain that culture within the office? like um, From a whole office yeah. point of view, um, so we our teams work in three teams, North, Central, Central and South. So mm-hmm. they have their own connections within their teams and then we have the broader team. So throughout the day, they're talking with each other all day. Mm. Um, and so they've got that buddy sort of, that huddle sort of relationship there. And I'm communicating with every, with them every day too. But I have made this rule this year and we, when we can get everybody webcams, um, yep. that when they're talking to me from home, I want to see them. Yes. So okay. it's that visual sort of um, looking. connection that yeah, is well you need. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, we have uh, we have found, and I think the the chatting on the teams all day connects everybody all day as well because everybody has to keep an eye on that because it could be a message relating to them. Yeah. So they can see what's going on. Um, you know, we we announce the anniversaries, the birthdays. So Thursdays, Mondays, and Thursdays is where we. Um, we give each other like a birthday gift where we sing happy birthday and do all that stuff and make a big deal of it. Yeah. But on the actual day then on Teams, it's all the good comments and everything coming through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Because, mm. yeah, that's the thing with them. Um, I just find with Zoom, like Zoom's great. I'm not convinced that that is the best option as 100% though. Like I still feel that connection you sort of still need to sometimes have in person and physically. So. Absolutely. And we we felt that when when – like the lockdown was last year where our team was. And we started off doing those Zoom Monday, you know, everyday catch-ups. And in the end I said, you know what, guys, we just need to do our Thursdays and our Mondays yeah. and we just need to continue because, you know, it's not actually doing what it's supposed to do. So, no, we're, I'm not big on the Zoom catch-ups, but if they're calling me, they call me on Teams via video. 
Okay. If they're at home, if it's, they're out on the road and they're just asking a question, then it's just by the phone. But if they're saying, look, I'm stuck on a process or, or something, then it's like on team so we can share, I can, they can share their screen with me so I can talk them through something. Yeah. That doesn't actually happen often because we've got our checklists and processes in place and we've got a long-standing team, you know. Yeah. Um, Are they a mixture of full-time and part-time? Uh, no, we most we've got two support girls who yep. are part time, but otherwise everybody's full time. Full time, yep. yeah, yeah, okay. uh, very flexible. Oh, and and a couple of um uh, our admin team yep. uh, are part time as well, but we're very flexible with the hours. Yeah, um, and so it's a yeah. bit of a manage your own time situation. Yeah. So yep. you've sort of got you know you need to do your job in eight hours a day. So but if you want to split that up, then that's absolutely. A, Totally cool situation. Yeah. Yeah. So the, being able to work from home gives them that flexibility as well. Uh, and we've got look our, our age group ranges from early twenties up to, up to I think mid fifties. Mm. So very broad range of age groups and and uh, some with family, some with not. But even the ones with not, you know, they've got they've got pets and partners that they want to spend time with and everything. Um, one of our girls loves riding horses, so mm. she's up early in the morning. I said, "Well, just finish early, go take your horse for a ride," you know. Mm. Mm. Um, and one um, does a lot of shooting competitions, so it's like, well, and it is. We want that that, and that's what we're really working Balance. with the team now about. We know you're doing your job. You know what you have to do. If you need to do something during the day or whatever, then just go do it. But I don't want you coming and asking me and checking in with me all the time. Yes, yeah. check in on teams. Tell us what you're doing, and um, and so not everybody has that total flexibility at the moment because we're just we're doing um a little bit more work on some of our new engagement that we've just brought in. So mm-hmm. when when we know that they're following our processes right 100, percent then I have that conversation Confidence, with them. Yeah. So it's very much a moving sort of thing, and and you know, like with property management. One property manager can just have a hell raise and it's like, okay, we need to reset. You need to come in, let's reset and go through things. So it, it just, and I haven't really had to do that. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there, or maybe not necessarily is there, but your thoughts, if someone was to have like a baby or a small child at home and wants to work from home with a small child or baby, like, is that something that would be acceptable or not acceptable? Like, I know I'm asking the deep questions now, but it's, it's yeah. just, a, I'm curious over it. it. A small child, I guess, so we have one of our um, uh, trust team that she has uh, two young children, and but they're both at daycare now. Okay. Um, and and that was, so, so I think it was, diff- and during the lockdown, she struggled to work with the kids at home. Yes. And even the recent lockdown, she ended up bringing her mum over so that she could do her work. So we I, all struggled with kids. <laughs> yeah, well, I, and I look, kudos to you guys. <laughs> yeah, no, it was hard, but yeah. Yeah, yeah so I think I think it's, it's a discussion, but I think it yeah. has to be right. You have to be able to do your work. And perhaps when they're real young and, I don't know, do they sleep a lot then or something? I don't yeah, know. I, I know. actually <laughs> say that maternity leave is easier to take when they're older. When they're babies, it's actually probably the easiest time to work because yeah. it's sleep, feed, done, you know, work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we, we have conversations with everybody at at the time and we've had certainly people come back from maternity leave and uh, Laura now works three days a week school hours. Mm -hmm. Two days of those are from home and she's she's on our trust team Mm -hmm. and one day is in the office because Mm -hmm. I I still said to her, we need you, we need you to come in and connect with the team. So nobody works 100% from home. Mm -hmm. We need to see them. And I actually worked out that on the days that she's in, I'm usually working from home. So I said, oh, I've better mix that up a bit, hadn't I? Otherwise I don't get to see you. (laughs) Absolutely. And and actually, so do you mix people up so that like that, that you, are you worried about making sure there's this many people in the office at this time or like you don't get too worked up with that? Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays are awesome in the office. Yeah. There's nobody in. in there. And when when we get pies and cakes, it's really good. (laughs) Left to share. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's something that I would. Um, I would we do. We do actually say to the contractors or anybody bringing stuff in, and said, "Really, you need it Monday, Thursdays, because there's people here to eat it." Then, <laughs> yeah, correct, yeah, correct. Otherwise, there'll be all those photos over the um, yeah. your team app with, um, yes. with it. So that's right. Um, what, um, okay, so now I'm going to hit you with a few things I'm struggling with mentally because yep. you sound like you got it down packed, and and I. The thing is, is that my head. My so my head or my heart. My my head knows that this makes sense. Like I I get it, but I from a business point of view, there's a few things I struggle with. So the first one would be sick leave. So okay, you've got a staff member who's sick. 
that, but they're working from home anyway. So they don't need to actually take their sick leave entitlements because they'll actually probably still manage their workload at home. So then you can get a build up of sick leave entitlements. So I don't have an issue with sick leave building up because okay. in my view, if you've got people taking sick leave and you then they're not building up, then possibly there's other issues that you need to look at. Why why are they continually taking sure, sick leave? Sure, that's a really good point, yeah. So so the sick leave I don't have an issue with. And and it, we've just had a situation yesterday where one of our girls was really sick and she said, I'm not going to be working. Yep. Sick leave. Yeah. Bang. But then we had another girl yesterday who rang up and uh, called her a snothead because she was just full of a, a cold. And um, no, normally Thursday everybody's in. She said, so what we did with her, we had a training session. So she dialed into the training session because it was on online on one of our software programs. And then we were able to remote her into our team meeting as well. So the technologies are allowing us to still connect, whereas it, previously she would have just been at home and not connecting with any of that. Yeah. So she still worked. Yeah. All day. So, but you, uh, yeah, and I guess that's right. You're real sick. If you're really sick, yep. you will actually just say, oh, I, I'm not jumping on the computer today. No, yeah. no. But normally somebody with a head cold would probably come to the office. True. And yeah. then the chain reaction of that, somebody else gets sick <laughs> and somebody else gets sick. So we're actually keeping a healthier office Yeah. and still the work is being done and they're working, you know, um, to their capacity. And, and okay, when you're sick, you're probably not working 100%, but they're not. Yeah. Um, not working. No. Yeah, and yeah. so we are very depending. And we've had a couple of girls that have had to go home. And then we've just gauged, did you log on and do some work? Because it just wasn't, you just weren't right sitting at the office. Yeah. And so we just, we're just very um, open in those discussions. But if they're not working, it's sick leave. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And what about annual leave then building up and people, um, I guess like, it's probably hard to explain, but if you have got the flexibility, you're working from home, you may not feel the need to take as many annual leave because why? Like I said, it's actually, I've got, like I'm getting to get my home stuff done. You know, at the end of the day, you can, you're, you're having quite a, an enjoyable life. I think yeah, some I mean, of the yeah, girls would probably <laughs> say. But, but you, don't need, you don't need a break from the office because you're at but home part-time. You still need a break from the work. Okay. And do you know what? Even before we were full-on working from home, I still had issues with people taking leave. Yeah. Some people just don't take, take leave. Yeah. And, and I've said to my team now, um, because and it's more of a struggle now because the, the, the perception is you can't go anywhere, you know. So I've said to them, I want leave forms and I want at least 10 days because they need the mental break. Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest thing. So they, a few of them have been taking an odd day here and there, going away for a long weekend. I said, no. I said, you still need that mental break away from the constant of the phone calls, you know, the workload. Mm-hmm. So that's, to me, that's the same regardless of whether you're working from home or in the office. You mm-hmm. still need that mental break. And you're right, it does give them more flexibility to do things that perhaps they're trying to jam in on the weekend. But to me, that's just creating a better, healthier life, general life balance where, like, you know, you can do things during the week to allow your weekends to be a bit more relaxed and not yeah. less stressed. Because your washing's up to date maybe yeah. and things like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. But as far as having a holiday, that's not a holiday. And I've, sa- yep. I've said to my team, one or two days is not a holiday. Yeah. And so you need to take those mental breaks. And But I was having those conversations before. Before so, anyway. And, yeah. and like we were saying the other day, you do need that. The first three days is your wind yeah. down and then yep. you actually get to enjoy your holiday. Yeah. And that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, so so to me, they're, they're not issues created because our team are working from home. They're just issues because you of anyway. who the people are. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. You're squashing all these um, <laughs> these things for me. Okay. So now for me, I know my staff perform whether they're at home or work. Like mm-hmm. I, I have, I have no issue with that. And it, and, and like I've always said to them, I don't. That's not my concern at all. One concern I do have is my walk-ins. So I don't know whether your office has a lot of walk-ins. No? No, not okay. we, we don't, not where we were situated. No. Okay, so I think that's probably when I've really tried to nut out what my problem is because I'm very aware that I'm the one with the problem, not anybody else, is that our office is on a cafe strip. Mm-hmm. We do get walk-ins all the time mm-hmm. um, and we. I feel that if there was less people in the office and people working from home, then that puts pressure on my other staff members to have to handle those walk-ins or because, of, you know, I mean, yeah. it's all well and fine to say, well, you know, sorry, the property manager's not in, you're going to have to come back tomorrow, but you just wouldn't do that to a client. You would handle them and deal with them. 
So I, I think that's probably one of my concerns. And I sort of yeah. do think that maybe if I had a different office, like in a different location that wasn't street front, that my mentality might be a little bit different. So our biggest changer was got moving to a VoIP online phone system. Mm-hmm. So prior to that, with the phones being in the office, there would be the same people in the office that would get those calls on a Friday, hot water systems blowing, ceilings blowing, and they would always be the same people at the end of the day mm-hmm. in the office. Yeah. So I, I like that to the same people being in the office to take the people walking yes. in. Yeah. So our biggest change was moving to a VoIP phone system. So no, no matter where anybody is now, the phone calls go through to them. Um, perhaps a, a solution for you with that is a roster system. Yeah, you know, maybe that's it. And and probably what I would do in that instance, I would I'd just sit down with the team and say, this is the problem. So how are we going to resolve that? Because it is unfair mm-hmm. for the same people to be dealing with those, with the people walking in. Yeah. Um, because they choose or need to come into the office. Yeah. So maybe maybe it is just a bit of a mix and mix and saying that we want to start investigating this. Yeah. But one of our things is is that we are. A, a high street profile office yeah, and we need to be able to service the people walking in yeah. but it's unfair that the same people are having to stop their work to do that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think what probably makes it harder is because we don't have the reception anymore. Mm -hmm. So we are all managing that and I guess if we had a receptionist we would have someone who is there to handle those walk-ins as well which we don't. So I think that's probably one of my biggest... um, like other reasons yeah. why it's hard to... Well, and the structure of the office yeah. and, and that does come into play and, and also yeah. the people, you know, as I said, we don't not certainly remote working from home doesn't suit all our team. Yeah. So we've probably got about half, half. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, my, my team do love each other. They do love being in the company of each other. Mm. So I th- when we had all the lockdowns and I had one that wanted to come in the office, I said, no, you've got to stay at home. You're not allowed to come in. Like, you do need to stay there. Um, and they did actually struggle. So yeah. I think it, it's probably also one of those things that if I offered them the working from home flexibility, they actually probably wouldn't take it as much as they think they might. Yeah, yeah, very true. As well. So. No, no. And as I said, it's the people who live and work close to our office are actually the ones that are coming into the office. Yeah. And the, but but where, where the connectivity is, the others have uh, got that buddy relationship where they live and work close together. Yeah. Um, and so they're all connecting, you know, off outside the office. So they've got that relationship with each other. You know, they'll help each other with home opens and things like that. Um, and just that con- constant communication on the Teams thing. It is, it is um, interesting. The, diff- the, the huddles work differently, yeah. you know, because it's a different mix of, of people. Yeah. Um, so that is a challenge and we certainly have had challenges with some of our team f- not feeling connected. Yeah. But in a lot of ways, um, they've got to make the effort when they're in the office as well. So we also put in a rule, uh, no matter what day you are coming, if you're first arriving in the office for the morning, you must go around and say good morning to everybody, not just your core group of people. Mm -hmm. Because that then connects you with the people that you're not communicating with all every day. And when we have, we have, um, you know, uh, try to have quite regular social events and every couple of months we have a breakout session where we take the whole team away from the office whether we bring a speaker in or we nut out a workshop, I think they want to do paintballing or mini golf oh, next yeah. time, something have you, like have, that. Have you done axe ax throwing with them? No. <laughs> oh, have you? Do you know what? Like, okay, so they actually are completely off topic, but they actually do a really good corporate package and they do like a prize, like a trophy and a hat and everything. But it's actually an axe throwing competition. But there's also the anger room. Have you seen that? Heard of that? <laughs> oh, my, where have you been living? The anger room is a, is a place, I, I can't remember where it is, maybe Malaga. And you smash stuff and you put on like your, your shield mask and stuff oh, and you cool. actually get to it all with a hammer. There's like TVs and old VCRs and just old stuff. I think we need to do that now. Yes, Like right next yes, week. Yes. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so look at those two oh, as well. Yeah. And so that's yeah, there's those sort of stuff where we just go away, get away from all the devices and everything. And then, you know, we, we try to encourage them to mix, mix up, not just stay with the core group of, people but the team actually does actually connect really well and so we've got a long a team that's been together a while now yeah um you know and there's a couple of newish people but not not really so they're connecting really well but it is it that's probably the hardest thing is keeping that going but I think yeah. even when they're in the office that they tend to just 
work with the same people. Obviously, the size of our office, you know, so there are those little groups forming. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the, my challenges. And I, and I just do, we just do different stuff to mix it up and keep it yeah. keep it real all the time. And there's no different than when they, if they were all in or all out. All out, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, backtracking a little bit, but the office, do they have hot desks when they come in now or do they still have their own desk? No, they still have their own desk. Yeah. And we, we recently had to upgrade some computers and we did talk about laptops. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the fact that, it, it, so one of the requirements of working from home is that they have to have a computer of their own yeah. and two screens and the, the internet speed has to be at a certain level and the computers have to be a certain rate. Because yeah. if it's not productive, if it's not fast enough and that, then they, they can't work from home. So yeah. there's certain criteria there. Yeah. Um, so we did talk about laptops, but our IT guys, you know, the turnover of laptops is a, is a lot higher. Yeah. And we did talk about the girls because they could actually, now we're on Office 365, just log in and do Wherever. stuff. And they're going, what? No desk. Like it is yeah. that funny thing. They they still want to know that they've got a place in the office. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So although three days a week it's really quiet, uh-huh. everybody wants to come in and have their own space. Yeah. 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 Do you think, not necessarily for you, but for real estate offices in general, do you think that it's an opportunity to maybe downsize and save money in rental space and things like that one day? Yeah, I, th- I think so. I think the way that that, um, you know, that flexibility and, and everything will certainly bring that. I think it's, it's, it is still a big adjustment to people not having their own space and just yeah. like coming in, getting your drawer set and pulling over to a, you know, whether it be a stand-up desk or, a, you know, a hot desk sort of situation. I, I'm, I, I'm, I think we're still away from that a lot, yeah. you know, and especially the way with property management. I mean, it is, your problem solving is collaboration, mm-hmm. you know, um, so we, we when we moved to our office, actually, we thought that we'd have a lot of spare desks. But as it turns out, because we thought of that sort of, you know, we're not num- the numbers would reduce and stuff like that. But the reality is it hasn't. Mm. Um, and I can't see that happening even with the streamlining of the programs, which is a whole other conversation <laughs> anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I think still people want to know they've got a space in the office. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good to know. Um, how do you monitor performance? So I would say that the easiest option would be to monitor it based on um, making sure that you're not getting phone calls or complaints, um, you know, making sure all their normal KPIs are within a certain range, acceptable range. So that is a very easy way probably to manage it. Is that the only way or um, – and I – I mentioned this because I did I went to a high um, profile office in Sydney a few years ago, and they were already doing these very flexible working arrangements. Had a lot of staff. There was no way they could have kept track of all their property managers. They actually monitored their staff by the number of emails that were sent out and the number of phone calls on their mobiles. And if they didn't actually do a certain number of emails or phone calls that was within the average of their property managers, they would be summoned to the general manager's office space for the next 30 days to watch them, which is a different way of monitoring like the actual activity on the computers or just the end results. End, look, end results. We have yep. a good team. We actually do a lot of touch points with our customers with um, surveys and stuff like that in our team. We, we encourage our team to share the good news stories because that's what we do on Mondays. And the amount of good just ad hoc emails they're getting. Look, if and and so our team works out of three email accounts, Central, North, and South, mm-hmm. which makes it far easier for me to, <laughs> to dive in and yeah. see what's going on. Yeah, and um, so I can see if the emails are spiking quite quite quickly. Yeah, in, with one property manager, if there's a lot in the inbox or things like that. If you yeah. can see they're not being yeah, dealt so with. they're in main inbox and then they each have a folder. So yeah. I can see like one property and one of our property managers had uh, said a number of finals in the last um, few weeks and everything. So she's struggling. So we so I, we've been able to identify that. We have our our support team who are amazing, who are like our quality control team as well. So there's little soft things in the background. If people aren't following our processes, then I don't get alerts at every point in time but when it gets to a certain point I get alerted yeah so then I know okay what's what's going on? we've got a bit of a consistency happening here mm-hmm. dive in there of course we've got you know your normal your arrears and you know all that sort of stuff going on so um yeah I don't, I don't like 
we're not, our culture is not based on KPIs, you know, counting the number of emails and phone calls. Yeah. No, 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 not. And to be honest, I, I don't think I need to do that with my team. No. If a new person, you know, different different structure, different focus, yep, 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 yep. but not with the team that we've got. And we've done a lot of work and our focus is on experiences yep. and it is about picking up the phone. Yeah. Uh, and I can, you can tell when those things aren't happening because, and I, I randomly, then the team know this, I randomly scan over their emails and I go, oh, what's, what's happening here, you know. Yeah. And then you can pick that up. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I guess because your girls are in a, a pod system, aren't they? So they don't, or do they have end to end like a portfolio? No, no they management? have portfolios. Oh, they do. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say like if because if you're in a pod system, it probably would be even easier to monitor because you've got a whole team that has to like if someone drops the ball in a team, then yeah, yeah. But it's a bit in the, so they work. So it's a collaboration. So in the central north south team, there's property managers. So if yep. one of them is really busy, the others can easily jump in and help because okay. they're working out of that email account um, and every Monday they have a huddle and say, right, where's everybody who needs help or, or whatever and we have a couple of support people that can help with uh, when there's crazy finals and stuff going on yeah. and on holiday relief. But, no, they all have their own portfolios and they're all accounted accountable for their own portfolios. Okay. Yeah. They do their inspections, they do their, their finals. Um, PCRs is done, combination of outsourcing and from one of our support people. Mm-hmm. Um, but, no, but, no, the the... It, it is still just about that collaboration of helping each other um, when, and it's easy for them to see. Wow, you know, you've got you you've got lots going on at the moment. How can I help you? Mm-hmm. You know, rather than having those individual email accounts where it's not so easy to have that visual across. Yeah, mm. um, working from home for people at a management level. Do you is that an option? Do you feel that that works in businesses or does should the management, a high level management be in the office so that they're present every day should someone come in? Yeah, so we've, we, I guess it's the high level management and the admin team. So our admin team um, don't have as, uh, they don't, they're not working from home as much, mm-hmm. but they do have the option to work from home a day, um, a week, a um, week. Uh, and if they've got stuff on, again, they have the flexible arrangements of, you know, being able to work from home in the morning, going doing stuff. So the flexibility is still there. Um, our receptionist is probably our biggest struggle. How do we give her time off? Mm. So that's what we're working on, whether that's an RDO or something like because that's not as an easy space to, to mm. do. But we want to be able to give her some flexibility so that she can have some time to do stuff. But, again, if we've said to her, if she needs to do something, just let us know and, you know, we'll manage it. We'll, yeah. we'll manage it. From so, on my perspective, so we probably tend to work from home a day a week, mm-hmm. um, and, and I think for me, like Mondays and Thursdays, obviously everybody's in the office. Yeah. The other days, I mean, I meet with everybody once a month, and I can't just do that on Mondays and Thursdays. Yeah. So for me, I have appointments, and we have various meetings with our like our BDMs and that through the week as well. So, so we probably just work. Um, from home one day a week. If if, yeah. if we want, if there's stuff going up, we can. You yeah. know, there's no no problems there at all. Uh, but I do feel that being in the office and having those meetings, it's just not possible to get everything done on the two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, last question. Is there a, a type of office setup that you don't feel this could work for? Or do you think that it could work for everyone? Oh, I haven't really thought of that actually. I think I think you just it just needs to be a discussion with the team. Yeah. Really. And and look it does come down to the leadership as well. They you know of of how they're managing everything. If you're a hands-on micromanager, I don't I don't think you're ever going to be able to deal with, <laughs> deal it, with it, you know. Yeah. Um but I I can't see any structure even like as I said with you being on the main street like I think there's mm. a way a discussion around it. it and a way to work around it. Mm. Um so I think the flexibility in the conversa- conversation should be had. It's certainly not for everybody as I said, we've mm. got we've got half our team that they they can they're all set up to work from home mm-hmm. but they just don't. Yeah. They, they like yeah. coming into the office. That's, that's how they start their day and, and they like that interaction. And that's, again, why I think it's important that Sue and I uh, have, a, have a presence in, in the office. And Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, it's like working from home anyway. <laughs> well, that's absolutely right. <laughs> I would say it's quite enjoyable. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> well, I guess my, the way that I could probably um, solve the problem is just by locking the front door. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And just, I, you need to get those, um, the, the, the window screens so it doesn't even look like it's a door, you know what yeah. I mean? And we just have a back door we use. I mean, that, that like, there, like I said, there is ways around it. I think that I would feel um, like it's just, yeah, just wait. But the, wasted office space, wasted money, um, but then I'm probably just clutching at straws as yeah. well and finding excuses. Yeah, and, and, and look, I think in the commercial sector there's a whole lot of discussions going on what does the office space look like now, yeah. you know, with it, with it realising that people can actually work from home and yeah. be quite productive and, and and I would challenge probably more productive and efficient yeah, yeah. than in that office environment. But it's still, you still have to connect your team. And, I, and, I, and I'm not a fan of a Zoom connection. I don't yeah. think, I, you know, I'm very big on that face-to-face, that physical connection. Mm-hmm. Um, and I certainly felt that when our t- whole team, when we were working from home. Um, so that's why the Mondays and Thursdays are really important to us. And so our breakout sessions and our social functions are really, really important from the team perspective. Yeah. And just the, just the simple thing of checking in each day with people yeah. seeing what's going on. You know, everybody can get a vibe of what's happening. Um, and on Thursdays now, we on our, the end, end our me- we end our meetings by sharing, I know, something what they achieved, something mm-hmm. what they saw, read, something like, wow, like really, did that happen to me this week? You know, it can be yeah. good, bad. And yeah. so that is also a soft way of the whole team getting to know what's happening. Um, so just always trying to mix things up in that regard just keeps that connection and keeps it real. Yeah. But the reality is even if they're in the office working, coming in, they're doing inspections, they're doing so they might not even see each other anyway. Yeah. You know, so um, it, it, yeah. Drive having them drive, especially the outer suburbs, drive yeah. to the office just to start their day to turn around, and I know some offices are like that, everybody has to be in at 9 o'clock regardless of what you're doing for the day. Yeah, yeah. And, and back at 5 o'clock before you leave Yeah, to go yeah, home. and it's like, okay, well, I could have done actually 10 more things if I was at home. So. And, 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 and managers like to say it's a security um, reason, but I don't know if it is a security reason. No, no, we're, and we're very open with our team <laughs> saying if they're, and if they're not comfortable going to a property, yeah. just talk to each other like with the home opens we've had we've had a couple of finals which have been a bit dodgy yeah where it's just like the two of you go let me know how how you're going um so it's just open conversations really yeah yeah and I guess like the good thing with work from home is that you if you are an office that doesn't currently do it or with like me struggle a little bit with it it's actually really easy to just slowly implement it will just be one day a week to start off with and then maybe it's two and then maybe it's three and then you leave it at that like you could do whatever you're comfortable with yep and that's that's really how we started. Yeah. And then it was, you know, like then the girls as they got, because they had to adjust to it as well, you know, it was an adjustment for mm. them like saying, oh, I'm working from home today. Like, mm. oh, can I? And I, was, I said to them, guys, I don't want you to ask me all the time, okay, because, you know, it, there's we've got enough going on. You don't have to ask permission, yeah. okay, just yeah. check in on the teams and do it. So they had to get around it as well. Yeah. Um, but then as they got more comfortable with it, then we started had to thinking about, right, now we need to start putting those boundaries in and saying Monday, Thursdays, yep. everybody in because it was getting to the point where people were were not mm-hmm. and we weren't seeing them until Thursdays, you know. Yeah. So it was like, no, okay, let's – we Mondays are always our start, Thursdays, um, and then depending what they've got on, they they might have to come to the office, you know, if they, if they haven't – if they've forgotten to take something home for them or whatever, then, yeah, you yeah, know. yeah, so we'll pick up keys it. and yeah. things like that. So. Yeah, so they've got to, it takes a lot of planning. Yeah, yeah, especially when you're living away from the office. You know, yeah. it takes a lot of planning. Right, what's happening this week? Mm. And if something ad hoc happens, then it could be they might have to drive to the office to do it. But we haven't really had that. Had that um, yeah. But yeah, so it is. I think it is a gradual sort of thing, and maybe the best way to start is, um, you know, do your inspections, just go home and. Finish, finish, finish the day, you know, yeah, don't come that's back. That's actually quite a good idea, mm. yeah, on the inspection days because I think my girls do their inspections on a Tuesday and, and Thursday for them. Yep. So if they do their five inspections and then finish off at home yeah. on one of those days then and then just see how that goes. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Or maybe they just won't even listen to this podcast and then I don't, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have to have the conversation with them. <laughs> So, but, it, but it is because there has been a lot of inspections and then you've got, you, you've got you know, new tenants moving in, you've got, you know, home opens and, and yeah. stuff. So no matter where they are to go out to, sideways to come to the office to turn around, it just doesn't make sense. sense yeah. So a lot of the girls who work come to the office every day 
they will still do that mix on their on the days where they've got appointments yeah. that just scattered across the day. Because as we'd like to think everybody would just listen to us and meet us at the time we want. It doesn't really happen. <laughs> no, no, correct. So that, that can be an easy easy way to start. Yeah. I mean, and, and like at the end of the day, the, I, I reckon it's probably a 50-50 that the girls are out the office anyway with yep. inspections and viewing. So we're only yep. talking about half of the time anyway that they're splitting. So Yeah, and the same thing happens when they're working from home. They have their option whether they do a small lot of inspections or a day. So it's, it's, it's pretty yeah. much the same. It's not like they're sitting at home just working. Yeah. And, you know, they're not, they're still in and out. Yeah. Probably more so, actually, because yeah. the properties are, are right where they are. Yeah. Um, yeah. And one of the biggest things is, I guess, from their mental health and their physical health is they move less when they're working from home. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like I know when I've worked from home, I look at my steps at the end of the day and say, oh, that's, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it is it's probably worth giving them tips on how to look after themselves, yeah. like the holidays and getting up and moving around and taking those breaks because they do, they just tend to just sit there, sit there working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at the end of the day, like ultim- ultimately what you're wanting is long-term staff as a result mm-hmm. of the flexibility and looking yeah. after themselves mentally and physically. So, and then that's a, an all-round win for the client. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and it's, uh, you know, if their mindset is healthy and everything, even when with, you know, the things they're dealing with now, the, with the, the way we do our team meetings and our connection and, and Sue and I are always there for a phone call, so are their buddies, you know, in the office. You know, it's it's just that open conversation and keeping it happening that even though they're not in the office, they're still connected. Yeah. You may have just convinced me to be a little more flexible <laughs> for one day. Next time we speak, you hold me accountable and say, Ash, how did you go with it? So I will... Start uh, small. <laughs> and, it'll, and, be, it'll be very small, starting but, very small. But they might not want it. As I said, no. not everybody wants it. Yeah, so, I, I think I think yeah. it's a novelty idea. I actually, I agree. I don't actually think they would, but I think it's a novelty idea for them at the start. But I mean, if you're like, as as I said, the biggest impact was our property managers living and managing properties in our outer suburbs. Yes, the ones close to the office. It it's they're probably the one that well, they are the ones coming into the office. See, eighty three percent of our portfolio is in yeah. our area, yep. and they actually all live yep. outside the area. Right. So <laughs> it's completely like we're like the opposite. Yes. So yes. they've got to come in anyway. Yeah. So it is. It does. Yeah. It, it it it's like anything. It has to fit with the office and the people yeah. and the people and who's working and everything like that. But we're having having them set up and having the ability to do that. Then if if they aren't feeling well perhaps, you know, keeping the whole office healthy, then you can say, just stay, work from home. As I said, sick leave is not my issue. Yeah, okay. And as far as I'm concerned, if we were using all our sick leave, I'd have to step back and say, well, what's happening with our culture? Yeah. What's going on? Why are people taking sick leave? Yeah. Holidays, always been a problem, still a problem. Got it. Yeah. Um, and But as I said, we can at least now switch them off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> so that's right. That's a good thing. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, there are advantages that, you you know, you can keep. And, and when somebody's not feeling well but can still work, that's got to be good than putting the pressure onto somebody else to cover them sort of thing. So, and if they've got families or or not even, you know, even if they've got stuff going on in their life, it might just be easier for them to work from home, deal with that, but still be as productive because they'll get up early, get it done, you know. Um, manage the time a bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And over the next couple of weeks, we've got a uh, um, good timing or not, I don't know, but we've got a few property managers who've got some personal stuff going on where they've had to take leave, but they said, look, I'll still do that final and I'll still do this and I'll do that. Mm-hmm. I just I just won't be working in these times. So that's yeah. the flexibility it gives you. Yeah. And next week we need them doing the finals. Yes, correct. <laughs> well, you're a wonderful, a wonderful leader for them all and, um, yeah, that sounds like you've got a good handle on it. So hopefully that is really good for people to hear that have been wanting to but have been worried about those boundaries. So um, I'm sure, Michelle, I speak on behalf of you, I'm sure you're happy for people to reach out if they've got any questions yeah, um, absolutely. about it and concerns like I did. Yep. So It was funny, actually, when... when things started happening last year. I had a couple of calls from people saying, but how how do I know they're working? Yeah. I said, it, it is trust yeah. as much, but you don't know they're working when they're sitting at their desk either, to be honest with you. Oh, no, quite often they're sitting on so, Facebook or doing something anyway. Yeah. So it's, um yeah, yeah, that's not, like, that's the problem you're going to have regardless. So. Yeah, and if, if that's your concern, then again, I think you need to look at either yourself, how your culture in the office is and everything like that. So there's a whole lot of mix of things. Whether they're working from home or in the office, those things are always going to happen. Yeah. 
if you know point taken thank you <laughs> <laughs> thanks for joining me if you do want to reach out to michelle um you can find her everywhere um on facebook i'd probably say is the easiest um, option for people especially the wa property managers and of course feel free to reach out to me if you've got any questions or want me to put you in touch with her thank you thanks ashley <laughs>